Hey everyone, just wanted to give an update on the Hypervelocity Rocket Project. Uh, this one is called the Swizzle Stick. Now, um, with your donations, we were able to make almost all the components, so that is a great head start in the project. I'm going to do a quick overview of all the components. Uh, we should have about 10 to 15 rockets ready for static firing and then flight testing. Uh, we still need to build the launcher. We're going to have a launcher that automatically spins the barrel and the rocket at launch. That way we can reduce the amount of variables in testing. So um, let's start with the, the, uh, the nozzle end. So right here we have a solid flare nozzle. These were machined by Black Locust Designs. They did an excellent job. So it is a phenolic nozzle insert and then an aluminum solid flare that acts as the stabilizer as well as spin stabilization comes in uh, really several components you have the phenolic insert right here these are machined from off the shelf uh, phenolic nozzles and this was made from bar stock and it serves two per per two purposes it is you know act as the nozzle as well as the stabilizing flare and then it uses the o-ring in between let's see we got one so there it has eight screw holes i believe that will attach the nozzle to the rocket motor right there as well as epoxy for a more st sturdy attachment point. So we'll be doing static tests to make sure that this is enough. Um, this is designed to blow out the nozzle first before we blow out the nose cone. So the nose cone is a little more beefed up. So then we have the carbon fiber motor case um, that was done by Reaction Composites. Uh, they did this out of high temp epoxy, carbon fiber. They did a filament wound um, tubing for us. Uh, they did an excellent job. We're excited to test this. It's a very long motor case, as you can see. This is a 40 to 1 rocket motor in terms of length uh, diameter ratio. So uh, yeah, we're hoping the, the originals were made of aluminum. This is made of carbon fiber, so we should have the added benefit of more lightweight rocket as well as stronger than aluminum. Um, moving up to the, the front section, the nose cone, um, this lacks an explosive warhead or a shape charge. This is purely using kinetic energy. So we have just a solid, war, uh, solid projectile on the front. But uh, as you can see, we have a very pointy nose cone that is primarily just for better aerodynamics as well as two rows of six screws and the o-ring you see right there so that will fit in the motor case and it will also be epoxied so this was designed for the nozzle to blow out first as you can see it has less screws so it will have less um you know uh, a lower blowout uh, PSI limit so this should hold longer so the idea is to blow that nozzle out first then the nose cone and then if that's blowing out the pressure is probably going to blow the motor case as well but the idea is just you know you always want to blow out the nozzle before anything else um, we do have a Teflon igniter cup in there and that'll hold the electronic match and if we use a booster of any kind or um, a tiny mini rocket motor that's using a very very ultra high burn rate propellant little tiny little cup in there we'll put some of that in there just to ensure that we have a full burn down the rocket motor we may also have a couple igniters down the tube just to ensure that we have a nice clean burn that is consistent because this is a really ro long rocket motor. This is at least double the average rocket motor length. So yeah, um, we still have to make the launcher. We still have to uh, do a bunch of static motor tests to collect data and make sure that the propellant we were using 
makes sufficient amount of thrust to get the velocity, which is anything above 5,000 feet per second. Um, this is a completely custom made rocket. Uh, we're gonna be using commercial propellant, but the idea of this is it can reach those speeds with relatively old fashioned propellant. This was made prior to the ultra, uh, ultra fine uh, ammonium perchlorite hypervelocity propellants, which was submicron uh, ammonium perchlorate, um, sometimes even smaller than that. And since that is a regulated explosive material, we won't be using that. Uh, so we're gonna stick to the old fashioned way, but this was designed in 1960 um, by Westinghouse Electronic Corporation. Um, so let's weigh the rocket actually. We've got a handy dandy scale here. It's quite a long rocket. So this is looking at just about, we're missing the Teflon plug. So this rocket is roughly about half a pound in weight. Then the propellant, we will have a roughly around 1.2 to 1.4 pounds of propellant in the rocket tube. We got plenty of space to put propellant. Um, the hardest part is dealing with erosive burning as well as dealing with um, the PSI pressure. So erosive burning is a concern, but a very high max flux uh, is to be expected. We're gonna be using a inhibitor on the inside core of the grain as the original use. Um, so we need to figure out the, the thickness of the inhibitor that they used. They used an aluminum foil inhibitor, uh, which would last about half of the burn, burn away, and then that propellant under there would continue, would start to burn from that point, but it's just to delay the amount of surface area that's burning at any one given time. And it's also, it was tapered. It was a tapered core and that helped with erosive burning. Um, we're gonna do a stepped design. So we're gonna have the core with the, the smallest core diameter, and then we're gonna gradually open it up to where it's pretty wide at the end. And that should help with the erosive burning issue. But yeah, I wanna say thank you to everyone that donated, made this possible. Uh, maybe hoping to test by the end of the year, maybe September, sometime around there, uh, depending on finding a location to shoot it, whether, you know, our, my schedule lines up with it and whether we have the supporting rocket motor data to say that, you know, these rockets are going to hit the velocities that we want them to and not explode. That's probably the most important part. I'll be updating with static tests in the new, next few months when we have the time to static test. Probably doing it one at a time. So thank you to everyone that donated, supported, shared, and thank you to Reaction Composites for the rocket motor cases, as well as Black Lotus Designs, LLC, for all the hardware for the rockets. Thank you and have a great night.